All right. Welcome, you guys, to the Wednesday Coffee Chat um, with me and Andrea. Charity cannot be on the call this morning, but um, we are just going to go into the team page. There were two posts that um, one Andrea had posted and one that I had posted, kind of asking you guys for topics, uh, questions, anything that we could do um, for training. And this, even you guys, I feel like if you guys have ideas that pop up through the week, even like posting them, or maybe we could even have a doc or something like in your team page, Andrea, that could just be like things that people could load up and then we'll always have a running idea of things of maybe uh, topics that we can always touch on. Um, that way, cause there's times where we all like me, Andrea and charity, we converse and we go, uh, what should we talk about? <laughs> We're like, uh, I don't know. So if you guys let us know, then we can obviously better help and serve you guys um, in your businesses where you guys are struggling the most. So we could go, I haven't opened up to see what the questions are yet. I just created that file. I just put an empty file that says copy and Q&A topic recommendations. Love. Sometimes we kind of know what's going on in the team because we're hearing a lot of the same stuff come up and we know what you guys need to hear. Or we might feel like super inspired to talk about something specific, but sometimes we're just like, well, we'll just talk about this, but we want to make sure that this, this whole hour is for you guys. So it's based off of whatever you're struggling with at the time, what you need in your business. Um, and you guys can always get on and ask questions. So come prepared. Like we can only help you guys as much as you let us help you. So you have to come prepared and say, this is where I'm struggling and ask that question. So some of the topics that came up, Britt had said how to provide content without writing a novel. She said, I suck at providing catchy content that doesn't take 10 minutes to read. Okay. Alicia said how to keep your coaches motivated. What would you suggest is the most important thing to share with new coaches? Um, and then Kristen said how to stay organized with your coaches, like when they're in the trainings, etc. Is there any of one of those that you feel super compelled to take? Um, right now, when it comes to um, keeping my coaches motivated, and the most important thing that I'm sharing right now with brand new coaches is what um, I took away from when I went to the new leader conference just in January. And that was one of the topics that, um, oh my God, my brain just totally went blank on her name. The blonde. Oh, that really helped. Right. Because like <laughs> Melanie Metro was blonde, but the other one, um, Lindsay Matway. No, um, she's Brittany. one of the bombshells. Huh? Brittany. It's not Brittany. Look at Brittany. Doesn't matter. Oh, my God. Keep oh going. God. <laughs> You're gonna kill me. Okay. It'll come to me. She's like number two right now in the company. Um, Oh, uh, Bonnie. Bonnie, God damn, dude, Bonnie Ingalls. That was going to drive me crazy. I wouldn't have been able to think. That was one of the things that I really took away from her training and the things that she was hitting on is that um, we sometimes, when we get started with brand new coaches, we get on and we're like focusing on helping them build these gigantic whys and um, like new coaches especially have never really, you know, people typically don't sit around and really think about like their big why in life or what they're really going to be, um, like what they're even capable of because they've never really ever tried to do anything so big in their life or ever been forced to dream bigger than like just the normal, you know, stuff that they do every day. And so she was saying like, the, the why comes during the process, right? As they start hitting many goals and succeeding and they start seeing their own ability with hitting the little goals, like just getting them to success club first in their first month or getting them to Emerald and, and hitting those first little goals as a coach. And then, then they can start developing their why and start seeing what they're even capable of or what this business um, has available for them. And so she was doing her training of right from the very get go, when she gets on a new coach training call, it's very centered around 
Emerald and Success Club because that's the building blocks of our business. Like, why do we feel like we can't get on a training call right away and give them the things that are going to right away start building their business and getting them those little tiny wins and then mastering that little, that skill. So then they, then they can start being like, okay, I did that. Now I can start thinking about diamond and star diamond and full-time income and what this business is going to do for me. So that's what I've been focusing now more is, you know, making it seem simple because it is simple. You know, it is and just getting them to focus on the, the power hour and the daily to do's and their own journey and knowing that their success is going to come from them being successful in their journey just going out and sharing it and then inviting people to join them and getting that, that, you know, ha that daily habit of just doing the simple activities every day and reinforcing that every single day. And then, then start working on the deeper why. So that to me is what I'm finding is keeping my newer coaches motivated by getting them the small wins and hitting success in their own fitness journeys and then helping them see many successes within their business. Um, okay, I have two questions. Number one, what, did you hear that at the leadership event or is that a video you watched? I missed that, that was at the new leadership conference. Did anybody record that? I want to say if it was recorded. And Kayla, you were there. Oh, no, wait, you came and saw us. I'm like, you were there, but you like came and had dinner with us. I was like, Kayla, <laughs> like I just like envisioned you then like in everything we were doing. <laughs> but you came and just, like, like, didn't, I swear, like, who did I ask? They, no they should have recorded it and there should be videos up. And I swear I even loaded them into like, I created a doc that I found all the videos I could find from the new, uh, the new leadership event. Um, with links and everything, um, I can double check. I know I loaded them. It's in your phone. Well, them again, so you can pop it into the chat box. And my second question is, are you wearing a bathing suit? No, this is actually, it's a workout tank. Oh, <laughs> I was like, I know you're excited for the cruise, but come on. <laughs> I just took yesterday's post and expanded it all day long. <laughs> All right. Okay. So back to, <laughs> back to focus. Um, okay. So two things you can think about, um, for getting a new coach started are the two C's clarity and confidence in the beginning. New coaches are still a little bit unsure. They don't know what to do. They're overwhelmed with a lot of information. And so the smaller goals that you can give them, give them clarity of what to do next. So saying like, go listen to the whole misfit site and then you're gonna have to hit success club and like blah, blah, blah. And just like verbally vomiting tons of stuff, like all the vital behaviors and blah, blah, blah. Like so much, it's too much for a, when it, when it, you're a complete like fresh virgin brain to beach body, all of this like stuff is just completely overwhelming. Um, and you only pick up little bite-sized pieces at first. So if you guys can feed the information to your coaches in bite-sized pieces, that's why the new coach tab is broken up one video a day seven days a week, get them focused on the new coach tab as step one, just doing a video a day and then implementing as they go. Um, and then the other thing is confidence. The way that you can help build a confidence is by um, emphasizing what they're doing right. So if they finish week one, celebrate that. That's why recognition is now the fourth vital behavior. Celebrate what they're doing right. So say someone, you don't want to go and hover over people and be like, okay, here's video one and, and kind of spoon feed them. You guys want to build leaders, but let them know like, okay, your assignment this week is to watch the first week of the new coach tab once a week. When you're finished, come back and let me know you need to give them some accountability and say like, you come reach, you set those expectations of saying like, come back and share with me when you're finished, because otherwise you're creating dependent coaches where you're constantly going to them be like, okay, is week one done? Okay, is week two done? No, you, you create the expectations of independence from the beginning and let them know, set those expectations and say, I'm not gonna you know, hover over you because I just respect you too much. I know that you're amazing. I know that you're an independent human being. Clearly, like, 
you've already been successful in life in some way, like show them like, this is how um, we're going to work best together is by you checking in back in with me. So once a week, you can check in with your coaches and ask some questions and say, like, um, is there anything that's coming up where you're hitting a block? That's where you guys can dig in and, and, when people tend to fall off, it's because they get scared because they're just making mistakes and things aren't working for them. So if you can check in and figure out what's not working and then give them a fresh perspective so they can reapproach it and do it differently, you're going to keep them engaged and motivated. But new coaches are so excited when they first start. So you have to capitalize on that excitement because we all know when we get excited about something new, that momentum or energy can burn out very, very quickly if we get too far away from that flame. The way that we keep that flame going for ourselves internally and for our teams is to keep giving them what's the next step, what's the next step, what's the next step. So you guys can give them clarity and give them small bite-sized pieces and give them confident confidence by celebrating the things that they're doing correctly, okay? A coach who lacks confidence is going to walk away pretty quickly. Okay. So, and then yeah, Blair, you can find that and put it into the chat box or into the team page. That would be pretty killer. Okay, so Britt asked, I'm gonna go ahead and take this one. And maybe, well, I unloaded, I loaded up my entire doc that has all of the trainings. They're all um, uh, labeled by speaker and topic. I believe that video, it should get it. You know how it is. Not everybody always loads all the, the entire speech, but I believe that should be the one. I was even checking my notebook from the leader conference to make sure that is the one. Um, cause there's still a couple that haven't been loaded. So I'll keep searching for it and make sure it is. Um, but I was going to ask you a question, Andrea, when you do these, um, cause I think that was one of the things too, that somebody had asked in the conversations. Now I don't have the it loaded up. When you do that, where you're giving those little tiny bits, do you have like a system, like where they're, where they're at and the, like where you're plugging them in at, like where, what step they're in when you're like onboarding a new coach. So, you know, like, okay, I've given them that little bit and then I know I'm giving them this little bit. So do you have them like loaded into some kind of tracking system that that's where you are knowing where they're at step by step in that like that's a great question. So I use um, an uh, I use an autoresponder, so you guys could use um, like Mailchimp or something like that, um, where you are your coach signs up. And I know like some people say like you're not supposed to use Mailchimp for MLM. I'm not using Mailchimp to email out a list and to recruit people. I'm just using it to teach, which is different. Um, but what I do is I set up an autoresponder. So once a week for the first four weeks of their business, they get an email from me and says, this is what you should have covered this week. If you're not there, that's okay. You work out your own pace. And then I ask a question and then I put my link for them to book a phone call with me, a one-on-one. -on -one. It's up to them to book that call. I don't force my coaches into that call. If they need help, they need to come to me and say it. But I do try to periodically in their first month go private message them and just check in and say, hey, how's it going? And um, but again, like I want independent people who are going to run their businesses on their own, who are going to be partners with me and me not like pulling them along. That's where coaches get frustrated and really burn out. So my system is send a welcome email that tells them their first steps. My welcome email is already on the Misfit site under the Guides and Scripts tab. So you guys can see exactly what I send to my coaches. And then I send them an email once a week for the first four weeks that coincides off of like week one of the new coach tab. And that says, this is what you should have learned. How are you feeling? Do you feel confident? Blah, blah, blah. Um, a little story about an area where I might have made a mistake and this is how I fixed it. So I always have a little bit of a story um, in there and then my link. So that's my onboarding process in the first month. On our first phone call, we talk about Emerald and we talk about Success Club. We talk about building their list um, of people. So I'm like, let's go to your Facebook page. Like, who do you think would be great? And I share with them, like, this is how I first started. Um, you know, I wrote down a list of the people that um, I felt like I really wanted to be in business with. That would be like my soul sisters. This would be super fun for us to build together. And I just reached out to them personally, like through phone or through, you guys can use voice memo, like as personal as you can get, the better, but just teaching them like what to say, giving them that confident next step. 
not too many steps, but just that confident next step. Breaking it just down to Success Club Vibe and Emerald is anybody can do that as long as they're being diligent and working their business on a regular basis. Um, so that's my onboarding process. I was going to say I found too, and Brittany, or Brittany, Bonnie, why do I want to keep on seeing Brittany? Bonnie talked about that too, about, um, because you had mentioned privately messaging your coaches, obviously, and checking in, you know, even if you're sending out the auto responder and, you know, it is their job to, to, um, to message you, but she was talking about how she groups her, um, she'll put them in like little, like she called them pods basically, but little private messages. And so I started doing that. I put, so all my new coaches from February are on in a new coach February chat. And so they're all together. And so you can do that for all of March. And then I've been doing this even with my challengers and putting all my challengers in one little private combo so that if you start getting stressed with having to like go and message every single person individually, just have them all in one group chat and, and just message them all together at once. Yes. Save your guys. I do also do that. So every like four to six weeks, I'll take any new coaches and put them into a group that also helps them figure out like who else is new, who else can I team up with and have conversations with. So there's like a really good community vibe there. So I do also use um, group messaging. Yeah. Okay, great questions. Um, okay, so the next one I'll answer Brits and then if you want to add anything onto that. Um, Britt says how to provide content without writing a novel. I said, look, everyone's like a little uncomfortable. It's kind of like, it's kind of like a new wheel. That's kind of like not quite gotten its flow yet when it comes to writing and Facebook content, the more you do it, the better you get, but to help you kind of break it down to feel more succinct because you want to have a mix of like some lighthearted fun posts that aren't super long, easy to share. Um, and some posts that share a little bit more vulnerability. So um, it looks like Terry, you're screen sharing. <laughs> so hold on, guys. How do I stop that? Terry, you clicked screen share. Can you? Hold on. <laughs> I don't think she even realizes. <laughs> oh, maybe she's trying to figure it out on her screen right now. X. So if you're if you're trying to figure out, you should be able to exit. Okay, I'm gonna just. Stop. Oh, there it goes. There we go. Okay. All right. Um, okay. So let's take one big topic, like our lifespan journey of weight loss and the struggles that we've had. Um, like we all have gone through moments of like insecurity, um, binging, you know, whatever your struggles have been, I want you to sit down and brainstorm and create a list of all the things. So for example, um, I was, I've never been tremendously overweight, but I was definitely what the magazines would call skinny fat. So I would write down skinny fat, um, uh, insecure. Um, oh, I mean more like content of words with transformation picks or recruiting challenge picks. Okay. So more like the structure of the post, you can unmute yourself, Britt. Sorry. Yeah. I mean like, um. I'm, sh I'm sure you've seen it multiple times on my post, but like I'll, I'll put my engagement posts or whatever, or whatever I'm trying to do, whether it's like um, recruiting or looking for your challengers or whatnot, but I can't seem to just like get it out. It ends up being like forever long. Okay. I need to try to, I'm just trying to figure out like if you guys have like, like three topics that you hit, like. I don't know. I don't know. I'm just trying to get a better idea of how I can like shorten it, but still have the same info. So this is a call to action post specifically. Yeah, I would say that that's probably the best. Like challenge or inviting people to a challenge group or coaching. Okay. So first sentence has to be attention grabbing. Think of it as like an email subject line. Um, I find lots of great like first sentences on the cover of magazines. 
because they know they have to have really catchy headlines on there in order for you to grab that magazine and want to pick it up. So you guys can look for inspiration there. If you're feeling you guys don't have to have a physical magazine, just go to Google images and type in like fitness magazine covers and you guys can find lots of stuff there. So first sentence has to grab attention and make people want to digest more of your posts, right? Next is as you read through your whole post, just free write at first, whatever you're feeling. As you read through your post, you have to then reread it as the person who's gonna be like your potential challenger, for example, through their eyes. If at any time during your post, they're gonna say, so what? Like you're just telling that story because it's a part of your story, but it doesn't have anything to do with them, it doesn't affect them, delete. Because your post isn't about you, it's if your post is like blah, 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 everything about you, it's all ego. Like you're just posting that really for yourself, not for the intention of serving that person. So every element of that post has to be with the intention of serving that person, either inspiring them through your story, but pulling them in and they're sitting there reading this thinking, what does this have to do with me? So you can read it from that perspective after you write it and reread and say, this person's going to sit there and read it and they're going to say, what does this have to do with me? Am I doing a good job explaining what this has to do with them? Am I pulling them in? Am I sharing a little bit of piece of my story and then asking questions? For example, you might say like, um, I, uh, this is a piece of my story on my about me page. Like I used to get out of the shower and I used to race past the mirror. So I didn't catch a glimpse of myself in the mirror because I didn't want to see myself naked. Have you ever done that before? That question is now engaging them. It's asking them a question that pulls them in. And this is saying like, this is what this has to do with you. Are you like avoiding your own reflection because of insecurity? Because you don't like what you're seeing back. So that would just be a simple example of a small bite-sized piece of my story and then pulling them back in. Um, yes, I can look at, let's see. Oh, could you possibly look at my most recent one with me pointing at the kids? I'm going to go ahead and actually do that on this call because I think it would be good for people to be able to see a real example and then have me give feedback. So I'm just going to go to your page. If you guys want to go to Britt's page or I can just share my screen. Let's just. Yeah, I was looking at Britt's page too. And I was, and I was kind of wondering Britt, because I, I feel like when I, when I read your post, like I was taking, when you were like asking the question, I was taking it as. Like, I think that you're developing the good posts, but you feel like you're putting way too much length to it. Like it's, you're, you have so much you want to say that you say it all versus condensing down like the highlighted parts. Like that's I see exactly, your post, I think it's great, but you're, it's just very long. Yeah. That's exactly what I mean. I just don't know how to condense it and kind of only give like the important topics. Um, Can you guys see my screen? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So but it's not showing this awareness. Keep going. Keep going. Like this one. one. That was a great right. post right oh, there, by the way. One more. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I didn't realize it was this far down. <laughs> <laughs> do, 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 do. <laughs> there it is. Okay, let's see what we can do. I don't really think this is a super long post, to be honest with you, um, but I do think that at some point you kind of have to start earning your right to do longer posts like this. So you do have to condense it at first and tell people really start to enjoy your posts and start to engage with you. And then it's, it's like earning your, you know, your badge saying like, I now have the right to write longer posts, um, which can take a little bit of time and patience and diligence work on your writing skills. A place sometimes what I'll do is I'll go to really successful bloggers pages and I'll read their blogs and, and just study the structure of it and say like, does this engage me and why? So I'm just always just asking questions. Why does this work? Why does this work? Why does this work? That's how I built my whole business. So for example, um, I love that you emphasized really with the little arrows here that draws people's readers. If you guys watch Lindsay Matway, she's really good about like grabbing and adding in some emphasized like 
um, words and little symbols right here because it kind of pulls people's eyes down. That's why bloggers make some text really big, some text small. It, it leads people's eyes down. So that's good. Um, let's see. Why do you give up? You see these two kids. They're why I wake up every day. They're why I work hard, why I want to keep pushing forward even when I know it's not fun. Um, So when I reread my posts, I ask myself, and this first, especially if it's a longer, I, I have to ask myself, is this information the most juicy part? And if it's not, then I have to restructure my posts. I have to add the juicy part. So you add, you share your story. You say these past two weeks have reminded me why my time is precious. Um, So this is a little bit more. Even this part, the last two weeks hit me really hard. I would actually completely delete this. And I would start right here because this is the juicy stuff that people want to read. Like think of it as your own reality TV show. Like they put the juicy stuff first. Like that's how they want to grab you. Right? So, the past two weeks hit me really hard. I felt guilt, depression, anxiety, unhappiness, anger, sadness, and more. If I was to read that first, I'd be like, oh gosh, what's going on with my homegirl, Britt? I need to read this. So I set extra stuff up here. Doesn't grab me quite as much at first. Yes, it's important to have a question sometimes, but sometimes a really powerful statement has more effect than a question, unless the question is really juicy. Um, so I would delete that. I would say, I want to jump in and just say something. When you come in to that, that little after that, I hate it, and you're kind of listing off some things that you've fallen off the wagon. I sometimes, in putting them in paragraph forms, I find it's easier just to almost like list it off. You know what I mean, Andrea, where you're like, yep. this, is, this is what I hate. And then it's like, A, like crap, I didn't work out. I didn't do this and kind of just boot, put it in a list. I mean, sometimes yep. your post, we have a tendency to write it out like it should be in an actual like, because I think it's what we're taught in school, right? Like right. proper grammar and English, it's, should be formed in paragraphs and you don't have to do, you don't have to follow those rules when you're building a post. And sometimes I just will list things off. I did that just yesterday of, you know, the things that I'm counting off as my wins and I just listed them off. And then I put the little decals in front of them, you know, like how you highlighted really. And I highlighted those. So they stuck out even more because you could highlight all those out, the things that, yes. you know, maybe you didn't do and list That's it. That's such a great point. So what you could definitely do here to shorten it up is just do bullet points like Blair said. Some of this stuff is just filler, filler information. Like I haven't, you know, sounds like a ton, but I don't really drink anymore. Don't really need to add that. Um, and uh, let's see, so that would shorten it up quite a bit. I'm a little unsure as to, I feel like you jump around to two different topics of like what this post is about a little bit. Yeah, I have like super ADD when I'm posting. Okay, so that's when you just need to re-read your posts again and ask those questions like, is anybody gonna read this? Is, is any part of this gonna have someone say, so what? And then am I focused on one topic or am I jumping around too much? Do you write out your posts beforehand and do it like I, I won't always write my posts right on Facebook, right in the comment section and try to build the post there. I'll pull out my phone and do it on the like the, my notepad. And sometimes I'm working and I'm putting pieces together. And so I'm crafting it and then I can reread it. I can take pieces out. I can add things in. And then I don't know, like sometimes when you're trying to do it right on Facebook, sometimes you feel that pressure of just getting the post done and then hitting send. Maybe mm -hmm. I don't know where you're actually maybe even doing the creating of your post. I know for me that helped me 
It's usually oh, like all on a whim. <laughs> it's like usually I get an idea and that's all on a whim. And then I just post it. I don't really reread it a lot. I think I need to take more time and create more. So I'm like you, I post on a whim, but I always reread. And this piece right here, I lost my mother when she was 31 years old, needs to be way up here. Or it can even be a separate post. Right. Those can be things like when you have so much good content there, I can sometimes look at things and I'll break them up into two separate posts and then build another post that's around there. Um, because you can always tell your why multiple times and be sharing it, but breaking up and highlighting Like I, I have multiple pieces to my fitness journey and my why of why I grow my business. So I tend to highlight the sp one specific area of my why, because then I can give it more detail and, and not be too long of a post with too many pe like moving parts to my why. I can focus mainly on my kids or mainly on my health and fitness or mainly on getting us out of, you know, uh, when we were getting off food stamps and stuff like that, I can just tailor it to that one specific topic and then it won't maybe be even two as long. Yes. So if I were to rewrite this post for me reading it right now, I would start with the last two weeks I felt guilt, depression, anxiety, and happiness, anger, because I, you know, um, haven't been taking care of myself. I should know better. I lost my mom when she was 31 years old, but I have been eating like crap. I barely exercise, blah, 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 blah. I can't do that because I want my kids to have their mother around. I'm better than that. My kids deserve more done. Well, I was kind You're of going... I was kind of going over like through the fact that because I've been it wasn't I didn't I don't even know why I brought up my mom or like how everything tied together but it was more along the lines of like how you know people that are following me know that I had been in court for the past two weeks dealing with Ava's daycare abuser um so I was just trying to show like even though I was dealing with all that stuff and I was eating like crap like coming back and, you know, and I wasn't exercising and I was drinking a lot. Um, just that I wanted to show people like that we aren't perfect, that we still mess up too. But when I came home and actually saw the kids and realized why I was doing it again, um, and that how time is precious. And then I, I kind of went a lot of out of order and. Yeah. Okay. So I, oh, I was going to say, sometimes I feel when you, Writing, I, I do a lot of writing on the fly too, like Andrea does, but sometimes when you're triggered to write, and I find this for me personally, if I'm triggered to write something based off of I'm having an emotional moment or I'm having something that emotionally is big that's triggering this, I need to get this out and talk about it. I really do need to sit and kind of work through it and figure out the post and really break it down a little bit because sometimes it will it's like a flood of emotions come out and you're almost purging yourself all on your post which could maybe i don't know i you know i know some coaches do they do a lot of journaling and journaling it out and writing it all out and then looking at your what you've dumped out and taking what you want to impact people because when i read that post when you just explained to me what your intention was to help people, what you were going through, that wasn't the first thing that I took from that post. Mm -hmm. And if you're wanting that to resonate with your followers, that there's a certain feeling that you want them to have and take away from that, then, you know, it's, it's looking at that and, and making sure that that, that is what you is transpiring through the post. Right. Um, and don't be afraid to ask someone like post on a team page and say, does somebody want to read this and give me feedback or something? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Because what you verbally said to me wasn't the whole vibe that I got from reading that post. So yeah, it helps to kind of just get, because we're so all up in our own heads. We have so much going on. Like if you guys were in my head for even a half a second, you guys, your brain would explode. Like <laughs> there's a lot of like creative ADD going on. So I totally empathize with where you're coming from. Um, and I catch myself doing it too, but that is why I, like, I'm pretty solid about rereading my post before I ever hit that post button. And sometimes I'll even 
post it and I'll go back five minutes later and I'll reread it with five minutes of fresh brain. I'm like, oh, and then I'll click edit. <laughs> you guys can see a lot of my posts are edited. <laughs> I do that all the time. Yeah. All the time. I'll go back and redo. But that's a good, uh, I, you know, that Andrea said to post in the team page. I mean, I know that um, I encourage this hugely and, and my downline, my downlines page is that I'm constantly um, encouraging them with, with everything that they're posting, um, especially new coaches too, when they're in that process of learning how to start posting, I'm like, use the team page as a practice place. Right. Yeah. Use the team page as your area to do all your posting and then ask your teammates are, this is what I'm wanting to, um, the, the feelings that I'm wanting people to react, or this is what I'm trying to get connected with people on. Does this resonate with you and asking them their advice, um, and, and use that the area, the safe place to practice all your posting. Yes. Love it. That's a great topic. Cause I know a lot of coaches struggle with, you know, how to write out their stories at first. And we try to a really great method for like, um, where was I, where am I now? What helped me get here? Of just like before current and then like the tools that I use. So that's kind of a little bit of structure that you guys can use, but yeah, I love your passion in the post and that's something that not a lot of people have the courage to do is share those things. So now it's just really about polishing and you'll totally get there. I mean, the fact they're asking the question shows that like you're working. Okay. How to stay organized with your coaches. I think we kind of talked about that Kristen a little bit, but that like my, um, onboarding process. I get that email once, once a week, but again, it comes back to like them take an initiative to share, like, this is where you are. Or, this is where I am in the training, get them asking questions. Um, but be very, very thoughtful, especially in the, um, I don't want to say earlier stages cause I know you're not a brand new coach, but, um, in the beginning when our team isn't so huge, it can be really tempting to just like be too hands-on with people, but then you create those people who need hands-on and you can't maintain that for very long once your team starts to grow. So creating those expectations from like the, as soon as you're like really, really ready to be serious about building a team is, is very important. Um, does anybody else have any like off the topic, like uh, questions that they want to ask? Um, what you guys think about it. Can I tell you guys a really interesting story? <laughs> I'm like dying to tell someone. <laughs> okay. So I'm going through, um, Amen university, which is like this ridiculously smart brain doctor. And the reason that I signed up for his university is because I struggle with focus and attention span and really, really bad brain fog. And so he has great like nutrition plans to complement your brain type and just like, you guys, like, I like to color for a living, so if I can learn this stuff, it's, he's such a good teacher. <laughs> um, and so he was telling me this really interesting story about how sometimes people struggle with depression or, like, anger or frustration or focus issues, and, like, it really, really affects relationships. It affects, like, outbursts of anger. Some people... Um, like physically can become physically abusive. And we think like, these are just really shitty people and they're just like, there's something wrong with them. But what they, what he's made a practice out of is actually scanning people's brains. And he showed this, um, scan of the young, um, man, uh, young boy, I guess, I think he was like 16 or 17, but yeah, pretty young where he had gone in to see lots of therapists. They put him on ADD medication. That didn't help. They put him on depression medication. That didn't help. Um, his parents finally just took him off all the medication. He went into school with weapons and ended up in jail. Um, his parents brought him home and that night he killed both of his parents the next day, walked in and shot 25 people in the school. This is before Columbine and they scanned his brain through part of like his trial and he's sharing like the results of where he has damage from his brain, probably like an early childhood injury where like my brother hit me in the head with a baseball bat when I was little, like <laughs> I could be fucked up for years. Who knows? 
<laughs> but like as kids, we're constant. I mean, my sons had two concussions, one from football and one from falling off of a trampoline. That tiny little like, slit where you're supposed to just be able to slide out, he managed to fall out of and like fell on top of his head. So I know it explains everything now, right? Where I'm like, woo. <laughs> Um, if I can still make success work with what I've got going on in here, there's hope for everyone. But anyway, so they scanned his brain and they saw very clear damage to, I think they said it was his front temporal lobe, uh, lobe which controls, um, which if damaged can control um, really severe mood instability. And for me, I just had this like big, like heartbreaking moment. Um, where we look at these stories on television and we think that there's just like horrible people in the world that are just like evil and we condemn them and we put them in jail and um, not saying like we shouldn't contain them, but really it might be this like simple issue of like an injury when they were five and like there was never any like really abrupt, clear signs except for the fact that all of a sudden they just started becoming having like mood issues and I was just had this like now I want to go have my brain scanned <laughs> so first of all <laughs> it's more for volume on week what oh so maybe okay Tracy asked a question I'm like I don't I don't get it <laughs> um so anyways I just had to share that with you guys because they just had this like really huge like sense of compassion towards people who struggle and um, they even did a scan on a man who had been like um, physically abusive to his wife. And I grew up in a, in a home where um, my stepfather for years was very physically abusive to my mother. And you sit there and you grow like this anger and resentment towards people and thinking that they're just bad. And really like it might just be this injury. And had they put him, he said that for that particular boy who shot up the school, he's like, had I put him on an anti-seizure medication, odds are he probably actually would have almost fully recovered. And that would have never happened. Doesn't that just like put this nauseousness in your stomach? So anyways, you guys are like <laughs> the first people that I've had a chance to tell this story to, but I was seriously watching like brain videos for two hours last night. Could not look away. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh my god i think we should do a mr republic field trip and all go get our brain scanned <laughs> okay tracy has a question off topic how much how many coaches to the family member oh my god. when building family to diamond is more for, okay hold on let me reread how many coaches to the family members? So Tracy, you're talking about like building a spouse or like a child. Yes. When building family to diamond is more for volume on week. Can you unmute yourself, Tracy? Oh, you're still muted. And my husband decided to hop on from Boeing and he, oh, he went away. Oh, I was like, why is she laughing at me? <laughs> laughing at my husband because he popped on and it said big Kyle and he's just sitting there like this. <laughs> Jeremy did that the other day on one of my calls. All of a sudden I look and I was like, are you in the living room? But he couldn't get his volume to work and it was like divine intervention. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, nobody needs to hear him right now. Get back to work. Build a plane. Tracy, I can't hear you. I hear you, no. Tracy. Okay. So just confirm, like you're talking about like building a spouse, for example. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So how many coaches to add to them? They're on your weak leg. Okay. So right now, what's perfect? So what's your goal? Two star? Yeah. Do you have someone on your strong leg that's like building? How, first of all, tell me how, can you give me like a normal volume week for you on your left and right leg? Oh, okay. So you have husband on strong, Julia on weak. Perfect. Okay. So what's a normal volume look like on what's your weak leg and what's your strong leg? Like, um, okay. So strong. Okay. So 12,000 and 1500. Okay. Perfect. So I would totally build your husband to diamond because it doesn't matter. You're, you're getting the team cycle bonus under the both the accounts um and you're getting the commission from challenge pack orders and it's all building your weak leg 
So is that your question? Well, Steve is sitting on strong. Right. But she's talking about building her daughter. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah. okay. Cause your daughter's sitting on the week. Okay. Now I get you. Right. Right. So she has eight coaches. Okay. Six. Okay. All right. So I would, I would be totally comfortable building her account and it, yeah, six active coaches. That's not going to hurt you aside from like, if you put like six rock stars and then they're all going diamond underneath her, but like either way, like I have diamonds underneath my husband and that doesn't bother me. Like eventually I'm, I continue to build his account too. So, um, and I take care, I treat those diamonds like they're my PS diamonds. I give them the same rewards and stuff like that. So, okay. Yeah. She has an emerald. I would totally build her to diamond. Okay. That's, I guess I was hearing it that you were saying build. I was not hearing you say build her. Right. Yeah. He has her daughter yeah. on her week and then her husband. Yeah. yeah. On now I'm seeing it. Yeah. My brain was not fully flushing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I went back and forth because my husband sits on my weak leg and for the longest time I kept thinking, oh man, if I put coaches under him, what if, what if, you know, they build strong and then I don't have them, but it's like, like Andrea says, like, regardless, it's still building your weak leg. You're still building that weak leg volume. Right. You're not no stealing what. volume from your first business center. Yeah. Which would be like building Steve would be at some point beneficial because you so if I had a control of a diamond on my strong leg, I'd have been 15 star a long time ago. <laughs> so, <laughs> how much cushion? That's Jay. Steve has six active coaches. Nice. I don't understand how much cushion. What do you mean? Cushion, are you meaning for them to hold their diamonds? Cushion uh, on each of their accounts? Is she working her business at all? Kind of. I feel like we're playing charades. <laughs> I know. <laughs> First word. <laughs> we work it together. Okay. Uh, uh, can you guys hear me? Can yeah. you guys hear me? Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm Tracy's success partner, so I know what oh. she's trying to ask you guys. Okay. Ask um, me. She basically right now, this is a She's basically right now, her goal is just to get herself to success club and work on building her daughter to diamond. I think what her aunt question is how much she should cushion herself before she starts going to Steve so she could get to two star and open up her second business center. So I think that's what she wants to know. Um, like to make sure I'm thinking personally, just get yourself success club five or six first. And if you know you're adding four or five coaches a month, I would try to just get yourself your five. And that's what I'm thinking on, you know, to kind of even it off. But I think that's what she wants to know, like how much she should cushion her daughter first before she starts building her husband. Does that make sense? Yeah. So that's like a case to case basis. Sometimes I personally go for success club 10 in my business before I started adding to someone else's because I want those leads. It used to be five for leads. Now it's 10. So I always shoot for 10 in my business center before I add to a spouse or, um, I don't build my sisters or anything like that. My children are too young, but as soon as they're 18, it's on like Donkey Kong. <laughs> um, so yes, I would get yourself to 10, add any extra coaches underneath Julia, make sure she has a good diamond. If she has working coaches underneath her, you should be pretty, yeah, yeah, exactly. It pays for college. So if you had, um, as long as she has working coaches underneath her that you're continuing to develop, but it's just, it's a total case to case basis. Like if you have a bunch of discount coaches, then I would add a couple extra before you go back to Steve. But um, at one star, even if you drop, it's not necessarily going to hurt you. So you could build her to diamond. She might drop for a couple weeks or something like that. You can pop another coach over there. Once you get your husband close to diamond, um, you definitely want her to have a strong diamond so that you can hold those six weeks, um, as two star. Um, so you'll need like really, really combat. You'll want to continue to build, but the good news with that is that you have control over both of those diamonds. You can continue to add coaches and, um, and maintain your six weeks. That's all under your control. But, um, 
you definitely want to get some like, do you have some good working coaches underneath you right now? Alicia, <laughs> refer to success partner. <laughs> She has a handful. Yes, she does. Okay. Yeah, because you definitely, like, two stars great, get there as fast as you can, um, but you definitely don't want you building your whole business. You can only sustain that for so long before burnout, you know? You need those coaches who are building, so you definitely want to get some good, strong builders over, at least on that week leg. Once you open up that second business center, you'll have control over three diamonds. You just need two more for five-star leap this year. But you've got to have those coaches hidden at Success Club, too. So you need people who are diligently working. Good question. I will say that when I was building Kyle to Diamond, um, like she's saying, like, I mean, one star, he was sitting on the same leg as my other first Diamond because Charity was my first Diamond. And then he's sitting on the same leg as her. So I was kind of like, you know, when I started building him, because I wanted to still build him to diamond because I, I still wanted to, you know, because I knew I was shooting for five star and it would be nice to have him over there to help with, you know, my five star eventually. So when I first started building him, he was more discount and coaches. And I would put, I knew I needed to put some business builders over there, right? To get the emeralds, but his account even still is more compiled of more of my discount coaches. And so he does drop in and out more of his rank. Um, and he's kind of all over the place, but because I do have more control over that account when I know and see, like when I was pushing for five star and I was looking at my weeks, I, you know, how many weeks I had of qualifying where I needed to go, then I could heavily recruit and put under him to buffer him during that time. Instead of making it my main focus, I continue just mainly building me, working with my leaders, helping them get to diamond and to be duplicating and just know that he was there, that I could always put my energy into that account when needed, um, instead of like totally overstressing myself. Um, though my husband likes to throw it in my face because he was like one star qualifying for like a couple weeks and then he never officially went one star and he's dropped rank right now and sitting at Emerald. And he then, when we're going on the cruise, you'll hear it, Andrea. I can't wear my diamond shirt. I'm a fraud. I'm not even a diamond right now. <laughs> I'm not even doing anything. So like, <laughs> it's just one of those, like, I just know that he's my buffer diamond. He's there. Um, and I just build as I can. Tanya had a question. Can you unmute yourself, Tanya? She said, how do you decide if you put a coach on your leg or your husband's? But I just want to understand your business a little bit more. How many um, active coaches do you have? I have two active coaches. Two active coaches. One's your husband. No, I actually haven't signed my husband yet, but I'm in the process of trying to convince him to sign up. Okay. Um, is that because he thinks he needs to work the business or because like my husband's just for show? <laughs> because he doesn't have to do anything. Okay, good. Okay. What's his concern? Because maybe I can alleviate that. Um, I think it's mostly, um, cause you know, we're, we're still paying for my Shakeology. I think it's just the having to have more, um, you know, personal volume points. So putting more money out, Okay. What, a whole lot of money in right now. Here's what you can do. And I totally understand that because I was like broke as a joke when I started my business. I completely understand. So what you can do is you can sign him up and you don't have to make him active right away, but you want him in one of those prime spots on your weak leg. So the sooner the better. And you, yes, you'll be paying the business service fees, but it, say someone comes to you and they just want to order like a program and there's no success club points attached to it, feed that sale through your husband's account and that will boost him active. So you don't have to be buying something. You could just sell something through his account for his active status until like, until I, I finally got to the point where I had Shakeology for myself and now I do boost. I do the Shakeology boost under my husband's because I love those. And sometimes I'll switch it with like Energize or, um, or supplements like that, or I'll do an extra box of Shakeology in the packets and I can go sell those. Um, and I'm not really out any money. And some coaches do that where they'll get a box of packets and then they'll sell them in packs of like five or seven just to reimburse themselves for how much they spent on their Shakeology. It keeps their husband active 
Or for example, if you want to buy um, like 22 minute hardcore, buy that under your husband's account. Um, so there's lots of ways to do it to where you're not shelling out more money aside from the business service fees. But if you're adding some sales under his account, those commissions pay for that anyway. But like, are you in this for like in it to win it for the long term? Like you're going to make this full time income? Yes. But put your husband and get him that best spot. Okay, because yeah, right now I have um, three coaches. So you're saying it would be good to sign him up as soon as possible. Yes, the sooner the better because those spots up in the first part of your business center. I had my husband on my strong leg in that very first spot and I canceled him. And now I look at the volume and I'm just like, Bleh. <laughs> I did the right thing for my business at the time because I needed him on my weak leg so that I could I could get the team cycle oh. bonus under both. But um, I just regret so much not having made that decision to switch him so much sooner. I waited till like a year and a half into my business. But even then, now I still make um, like almost $3,000 a month residual through his account and I really don't build it very much. He's a diamond coach. He's got okay. working coaches on both legs. So he's like solid. But um, if you want me to call your husband, I'll call your husband. <laughs> we'll figure this out for sure. <laughs> I'll have my husband call your husband and he's gonna be like, dude, <laughs> just do it. <laughs> okay, so your, your ultimate yeah. question is like, when do you start putting um, people under your husband? Was that what it was? When do you, was your ultimate, was your first question, when do you start um, building your husband's account? Tanya. Can you hear me, Blair? I can hear you. Oh, okay. Can you hear me, Tanya? Tanya, I didn't, did you get your full, how do you decide if you put a coach on your leg or your husband? So were you wondering that too, once you sign up the hubs, when would you start adding to him? I'm sorry, you guys are breaking in and out. Okay. Put him on. Your first question, were you, did that, you were wondering too, when you sign up your husband, when would you start building him? Is that what you were wondering as well? Or putting coaches just under you? Oh no, my question was answered. Okay, cool. Okay, you guys, I have to go jump on another call. So thanks for your time. I'm gonna go ahead and click.